Hello everybody! Welcome to another installment of uh, Alpha Bravo Pinball. Tonight we're going to do something completely different. We're not going to play. I'm not that good of a player anyway, so uh, <laughs> let's do something else. I figured my, my blog is a lot about maintenance and repair, and so why not do a maintenance video? Here I've got a Metallica Premium. Uh, I bought it about a year ago, and it's in real nice shape. It was a home use only game. Uh, but it's a little dirty. It could use some new rubber. Um, rubber gets uh, kind of brittle with age. It starts to degrade and dry out and then you get little black bits everywhere. Uh, you also get a lot of black dust from coils, um, steel pounding steel in the solenoids basically, which uh, covers everything on the inside of the game with black dust, but some of that also gets to the top side. There's a lot of openings on the playfield uh, where that can get up. So I figured I would start from scratch um, show you everything as I'm doing it. Um, I've got my, my tool chest behind me. Uh, I've got a new pack of clear Titan uh, rubbers that I'm going to use. And uh, that's it. The only other thing that I want to do to this game is, uh, is replace the, the cube under the hammer here. Um, the, ga the game ships with a, a very cubic shaped uh, bash target. You can't really see it because it's it's underneath uh, the hammer, uh, but it can damage the ball uh, and, uh, and and where where your your pinballs. So there's this replacement kit, which is a captive ball kit. Um, you know, this is just a stock part that Pinball Life carries. It's very cheap, uh, and that's something that uh, apparently is a drop-in replacement for that cube. So we're gonna hit, go ahead and do that and see see how it works out. The other tools of the trade, of course, a, a clean cloth, some Novus. Uh, Novus is a plastic cleaner, so you can clean all the plastics of the game with it. Um, the the playfield itself is wood, of course, but that wood has been silk screened with ink. On top of the ink goes a clear coat. Uh, the clear coat is pretty much identical to, uh, or very very similar to anyway, to the clear coat on a car. Uh, and, and that is some tough stuff. If you think about your car, it's parked outside uh, in the sun, you know, in the elements. Uh, it's, it's really tough stuff. The same goes for the clear coat on a game. Um, you know, don't use any super harsh chemicals, but a cleaner like Novus, which is really meant for plastic, works just beautifully on the playfield as well. So, you, you know, it makes it easy. You just have to use one product um, for, for, to, clean, uh, to clean the game. Uh, the other tools that you need are pretty much just screwdrivers, nut drivers, that sort of thing, which is all behind me. Uh, I haven't practiced this. I haven't uh, ever touched a Metallica before in terms of tearing it down, so we're going to uh, learn together as we go. And uh, sometimes, you know, this is not exactly a guide on uh, disassembling games. Um, sometimes you kind of have to, you know, there's, there is an optimal order to things. Some things are blocking other things as you tear it down. You discover you can't remove a piece because another thing is in the way. So it's a little bit of trial and error um, as you go. Um, the only other thing that I would recommend is keep all the hardware for parts you remove together. So if you remove, you know, a wire form, keep all the nuts and bolts uh, and stuff with that part to make it easy to reassemble. I don't go crazy with photos. Um, I think if you're just really systematic about this and you, I mean, in the beginning, the first few times, it definitely can help with, uh, to take photos. Once you've done it a few times, you'll, you'll, you'll get the hang of it and you'll just kind of know, you'll, you'll gain an instinct for, for how these things are put together. So with that, let's get started. I'm gonna start with uh, whatever is on top, I guess, in general, would be the, the thing to do. Um, so I'm gonna start with the wire forms. Uh, and the one on the right here has some, at least one nut by the sling. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll try not to speak behind me as I, as I read for tools. Uh, that, I got the right one uh, right <laughs> just by luck. 11 30 second. There's really three or four nut drivers that are the, the most common uh, used in pinball. Those are these are the four that I, that I just have always on standby. Quarter inch, 5 16 11 30 seconds, and 3 8 You have those four, uh, you're good to go. I really like these Klein tools. Um, they have magnetic tips um, so you don't lose the nuts. Um, they're really nice. So what did I say, 11 30 second. It also helps uh, when you're done with the tool, put it back where it goes. Uh, otherwise, the next time you need it, you won't know where it is. So uh, just 
you, you know, you use a lot of tools doing this, uh, keeping organized as best you can is, uh, is a smart thing to do. So, first nut comes off the wire form, which is nice black powder coat. It's very, very nice. All right, so I'm gonna hold these parts here and uh, you won't see the area behind the camera, but uh, that's kind of my staging area for parts. Uh, I like to put all the parts, like, like I said, with the hardware and I lay them down on the floor in the, in, the, in the order that I'm doing it so that when it's time to reassemble, you can just do the opposite. Start from the end and work your way back to, to where you started. The next nut, see, uh, is, is for the wire form, is under this plastic. So we're gonna go and see how this plastic is attached next. I'm gonna use a lot of Phillips, obviously. Um, Phillips screws and, uh, and nuts are the, the two most common fasteners. Be really careful when the, uh, the thing lets go that it doesn't go flying into the game because you will lose it. Uh, there's nothing worse than having a tiny little screw just like roll down the play field and, and it's gone forever. Hey Kiro Kiro, good to see you. I like how you have a whole rolling tool chest dedicated to pin repair, yes. Uh, and it's in my pinball room. Uh, like I said in the stream uh, a couple days ago, pinball machines break all the time. And so uh, you definitely want to have some, some tools nearby. Uh, this is a little overkill. Uh, I'll admit not all of that is for, for pinball, but it's definitely, definitely helpful to have at least your basic, you know, in, even in just a little small portable tool bag, uh, you can have everything you need to work on a pinball machine. Um, the other things that, uh, that are not in here are electronics equipment, like soldering iron, etc. Um, that is not here, but also useful. Alrighty, first part removed. So removing that plastic then gave me access to the one underneath, as it often is. And I like to try to feel around to see how many parts are connected to it. The nut that I need for that wire form is right underneath here, so let's just get started. Remove more screws. I don't know if this game, uh, this particular game that, I, that I'm uh, working on right now, I don't know if it's ever been done before, so it'll definitely be good to give it a good cleaning. So now, um, I've got... I'm just going to go ahead and remove this light. I don't want to lose that nut either. Only have a storage bin tucked under F14 for everything and some organizers from Harbor Freight. The Harbor Freight is good stuff. And yeah, you don't need to be high tech, right? Whatever works. And that's the, uh, you know, th there's such basic tools too that uh, for a first time owner, uh, you know, it's not too bad. You've got, uh, you know, you may already have a lot of the tools that, that you need to work on games. Alrighty, so now there's some cable ties holding that lamp, and I may just go ahead and clip that with a wire cutter. Yeah, you'll find there are some things you, you just have to not break, but you know, you, you won't be able to reuse that once that, that little wire, uh, it's just a zip tie holding down that, that wire. Once that's uh, clipped, there's no other way than to clip it. And, uh, you know, so I have a supply of, of uh, zip ties on hand, I guess is the moral of that story. All right, so I've got a post removed. And now there's a bunch of lights under here. I may just leave that there. Um, I could also undo those nuts. So I don't know how well you can see that, but there is uh, some lights under there. I don't actually need to take that out um, to clean everything. Now this part is kind of uh, not in the way anymore, can be moved for cleaning. So if you were replacing, you know, doing a play field swap, of course, it all has to go. You can't uh, cut any corners. But when you're just cleaning, you know, this part is now, uh, there's some wires. And maybe if I, if I tilt the play field up, I can unplug it from the bottom side, but that'll be a little tricky with the camera. But um, what I was trying to do before was remove that wire phone. Now I have access to the nut there. So I can go ahead and remove that. The 
is this the first time you've taken Metallica apart? Yes, it is. Um, I'm doing this live. I haven't practiced. I've never shopped a Metallica before. So that's kind of what I was saying in the beginning is uh, there might be some embarrassing moments here and there as like, hmm, I'm, I'm stumped. But that's why, uh, you know, people watching online, uh, if I'm stumped and I don't know where to go next, you can help me out and, uh, and point out, uh, yeah, how about this? How about that? So we'll do it together. Alrighty, so there goes the uh, the right wire form, and uh, I might keep working on this side of the game. Although that's if there's no rubbers back there, there's not, and it's an area that's uh, that's never visible. You don't strictly need to remove it to clean. I'm gonna ahead and go ahead and remove this plastic next because there's a rubber underneath there. Um, so the bigger nuts are typically 11, 30 seconds. They hold like ramps and stuff. They're a little bit beefier. The smaller ones, um, like that just hold plastics, are typically 5 sixteenths, if I remember correctly. Yep, so these are 5 sixteenths. There goes that one. There's some plastic protectors that have been installed on this game. So there's basically two layers of plastic. Uh, one clear and one with one with the art. Originally when the game would have shipped from the factory, there would have only been this plastic, the one with the art on it. Uh, the previous owner must have added these clear ones. They, they help protect the plastics from breaking. Um, you know, you can buy spares when they have them in stock and when they're making them, but a set of plastics is, is not cheap, so... Uh, you know, it's a good investment to, to get some plastic protectors. Alrighty. So I'm just laying stuff out on the floor as I go. That plastic uh, with its nuts. And now you can see the rubbers are all accessible. What I'm probably going to do is start by just disassembling uh, as much as possible. Um, and then after that I'm going to uh, replace the rubbers. So. The next thing I'm going to work on is down here, the sling area. I probably have another post uh, wire uh, zip tie to clip there. So let's get the let's get the wire cutters. This one is purple. I don't think they came with purple zip ties, so this can't be the first time that one's being done. Alrighty, and uh, we'll remove the spotlight post. These spotlights, uh, the, the lights tend to fall off on them uh, right, right in the middle of the game. Your uh, the, the LED lamp inside this little reflector will just fall out. They've fixed it on newer games. Uh, they put a little newer games come from, they still have these little spotlights. They come from the factory with um, a little metal clip that retains the, the bulb to prevent it from falling out. This, this is an older uh, game, it does not have that. However, um, the lights are solidly in there, so um, there's a couple different tricks you can do. You can bend the pins on the, the bulb. Um, you can also put a, uh, bend the, the pins back and then put a layer of tape to, uh, a layer of tape around the uh, the base of the bulb to kind of give it extra thickness and uh, that prevents it from uh, that prevents it from from falling out during play. Alrighty, so we've got a plastic gone here and I'm s just all of the hardware for this guy is going to go on the floor. Alrighty, let's see if we have any other questions. Just curious, since it looks pretty clean already, though I'm sure I can't see the little uh, bits of black dust on camera exactly right. Uh, it is clean, and it's a it's a home use only game. Uh, I've already had a few rubbers break; they just snap uh, when they get old. Uh, they get the you know the rubber dries out; they get brittle. Um, when when they start to snap like that, that's when you know uh, it's time to to clean them. Um, and the, yeah, the, it's it's hard to see on the camera, of course, but there's just a lot of of dirt and grime, primarily at the back of the game. Uh, actually, the front is a lot cleaner because it's so easily accessible to clean. You don't need to disassemble anything to clean like the center area of the game. 
Uh, but the back area, there's you know everything is covered in ramps and stuff, so uh, it's it, you know you pick any random game, they tend to be uh, dirtier in the back. Okay, so let's do the same on the other sling that we just did on this one. We'll remove the start with that zip tie. Back to the wire cutter. I like these purple ones, man. They look especially the, the purple zip ties look nice on the game. I have to see if I can get some of these uh, colored ones. Alrighty, and then the screw comes out the top of that bulb, the, uh, the bulb holder that is, and then the whole thing can come out. Sometimes I like to wear nitrile gloves when I do this work because your hands will get pretty filthy. Uh, it didn't happen to, uh, to wear some tonight, but that, that's another trick that can be uh, helpful if you can. Fine nitrile gloves. Now they're in uh, short supply, of course, with uh, with the COVID pandemic. Uh, part of PPE for doctors, I guess, is is gloves. So I'm certainly not going to go to the store anytime soon trying to trying to buy them. Uh, it's best to leave them for doctors. All right, there's another sling cover. Hope everyone is doing well tonight. Uh, broadcasting live from San Jose, uh, something I've never tried before, which is uh, working on a game instead of playing. I figured uh, I'm not that great of a player, so <laughs> why bore you with my terrible flipper skills? Instead, I can do something that I'm actually decent at, which is working on games. Uh, my blog, uh, abpinball.com, is very focused on, on working on games. So yeah, I figured I've never seen this done on Twitch before, but hey, why not try it? See, see how it is. If you have any questions, uh, technical questions, if you just want to chat about pinball, by all means, jump on the chat and, uh, and say hello. Tell us where you're from. Alrighty, so there goes the in-lane, out-lane divider. Don't lose any of the parts. There's multiple little gray posts. Both, uh, you know, it's kind of a sandwich of different layers of things. So there's these little gray uh, things are uh, both below, uh, there's two layers, plastic metal, so you've got a post underneath the metal, a post above, and then the plastic on top. It's kind of a sandwich of three. Alrighty, so let's do the other one now. This one looks like it only has two nuts, unlike the other one which had three. So if you take, if you uh, use these magnetic uh, bit drivers, don't go too far on the nut because if you t if you unscrew it all the way, it the magnet is pretty strong on this. It will basically just hold it. Uh, <laughs> you'll have a tough time getting it out of the tool. So you basically want to just undo the nut until it's near the end of the thread, and then do the last little bit by hand. Uh, that way you don't have to try to get that out of there. And that works pretty well. Alrighty. <clears throat> okay, so the whole flipper area now is pretty um, nice and clear. I won't have any problem. I mean, the, the end goal, of course, is to get a cloth in there and clean everything. So, you know, bulbs, uh, these uh, threaded screws are not going to hurt me. They're not in the way. Um, let's go next to the left wire form. Let's see if I can get the game out a little bit here. And uh, what, what are we up against here? So there's definitely a nut here. And that might be it. I think this one here... Uh, you want to just kind of wiggle parts and see what flexes and where it doesn't flex. And <laughs> where it doesn't flex, normally it's, a it's attached somehow. So I think we've only got one nut holding that entire wire form. And that would be in 11, 30 seconds. Your, uh, your nut drivers, by the way, are color-coded. Uh, there's a number, of course, on the, on the bottom of them. Uh, they're also color-coded, so once you learn the numbers, you can just, with a quick glance, without even looking, you know which one to grab. And of course, what's frustrating is different manufacturers different use different color codes. So I know the Harbor Freight ones, which I used to use, um, are are a diff different color codes than uh, than the Klein ones. I'll tell you why I switched from Harbor Freight to uh, to Klein nut drivers, though. Once I had a nut, 
that no nut driver worked. Like basically one size too small was obviously too small, I couldn't get the tool on it. The next size up was too big and I'm thinking like, what's the deal? Is it like a fractional size? Is it metric? I tried everything. I tried, I have a metric set. I tried a uh, metric nut driver, um, nothing worked. And then I tried the same size as the Harbor Freight nut driver I was using, but in a different tool and it worked. And I realized my nut driver is worn out. Like, <laughs> so they're kind of, they're kind of, you know, they're cheap tools, they're inexpensive to buy. And uh, it just, it wore itself out to, to the point where it couldn't undo a nut. So I switched to Klein and, uh, and they've been, they're pretty good. They're, they are a little pricier though. Alrighty, so there goes another uh, major assembly. Now let's look at this big plastic over here. It looks like there's at least, so there's a smaller plastic on top of the big plastic and it's kind of not flexing around that guy. So that might be a little tough to see because it's right up against the, uh, the edge of the game. If I pull the game out a little bit, maybe you'll see better. That's about a, That's all about all I can get until I uh, smash into the computer there. So let's just leave it at that. Uh, yeah, we'll remove this smaller plastic with the guitar on it. Electricians choose Klein. Yes, I believe it. If you, you know, this isn't my job. I just do this for fun. It's nice to have nice tools. Uh, but certainly my livelihood doesn't depend on them. When you're an electrician, you got to get the job done. You know, the last thing you need is, is a cheap tool causing you headaches, right? So uh, professionals, they go for prograde for a reason. Yeah, for me, I was using uh, my power tools. I, w I just upgraded from uh, Craftsman. I was using the Craftsman C3 line of 19 volt uh, power tools, which, you know, they, they are, they're very old now. They go back like at least a decade, the lithium ion ones anyway, to, uh, you know, when Sears still, still was doing Craftsman. And they were good tools. They lasted me a long time, but it was a dead end line. Like you can't buy new tools. You can't buy official batteries anymore. You can only buy uh, kind of third-party knockoffs. And so I went ahead and upgraded to uh, to some DeWalt tools, and they are just fantastic. Uh, very, very happy with my new DeWalt tools. Watch for sales because they're they are pricey, um, but uh, totally worth it in my opinion. Anyway, seems like just tools in general, no matter what you buy these days, though, the technology has calmed. Like even if you buy a Ryobi, there, I have plenty of friends that have Ryobi tools and they're very, very happy with them. They're just, the stuff has gotten so much better. It's great. All right, so this big long plastic has some, um, some threaded posts that were holding the plastic above, um, holding the, this long plastic as well. And this, look, look at this guy. It's got a plastic protector too, this big long plastic. Um, yeah, so that's now given me access to the whole fuel lane uh, for cleaning that. Uh oh, wow, I'm operating. Sorry I'm late to the party. No, not at all, Pascal. Good, glad you could make it. We're doing something a little different tonight. We're, we're doing... Uh, <laughs> And indeed, it's a pinball operation, uh, and uh, trying to trying to get this game cleaned up and uh, looking good, playing fast. You'll notice uh, a dirty game is a slow game. Um, so not only does it look that much better when it's clean, but it plays so much better too. Everything is just faster and smoother. So we're now in uh, disassembly phase. Um, when we're done with disassembly, we'll move move on to cleaning and uh and replacing some 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 old rubber and uh and yeah we'll go from there we're having fun talking about tools uh great homeowner tool uh homeowner tools which one do you mean the craftsman or the ryobi presumably dewalt is kind of like prosumer so i'm assuming you're referring either in terms of uh uh homeowner tools you're referring to either craftsman or uh or Ryobi, but yeah, they're no, of course, they're, they're both good. I haven't tried any of the new craftsmen, so 
Uh, Stanley Black and Decker, I believe, who that owned DeWalt, they own a bunch of other tool companies. Uh, they bought the rights to using the Craftsman name, and so now they're producing their own line. If you go to Lowe's these days, it's like everything is red. It's these, these new Craftsman tools. I haven't tried any of them, but they look pretty decent. Uh, oh, actually, I lie. I have a. It's not a cordless tool, so that's why I forgot about it. I have a a new, you know, Stanley Black and Decker Craftsman uh, circular saw. It's pretty good. There's no complaints. When it's when it's not a cordless tool, you're not kind of trapped in in one system because you know you want the batteries to work with the other tools. If it's a corded tool, who cares, right? It's and it wasn't. It was like seventy dollars or something. So, but it's a pretty good tool. I built my uh, TV bench. Uh, arcade TV bench uh, project uh, in part with the, with that circular saw. All right, so we have a spinner here, and um, the spinner is probably impeding removal of this plastic. Although maybe not. It's definitely impeding cleaning. Yeah, why don't I just go ahead and remove that spinner? The spinner has slotted screws. Uh, like, you know, not fill, in other words, not Phillips. It's a old style, like flat blade screwdriver, but they're also hex head. Uh, so slotted screwdrivers are a huge pain in the butt to use, of course, because your tool keeps like slipping out of the screw. Uh, if, if it's both, if it's both got a slotted head and a hex head, use the, use the, the nut driver. It's so much easier. Your tool is like self-centering on there, uh, a lot nicer. So two of these, interesting, they're, they're red. I don't know how well you can see that on, on camera, but uh, these tools, are the, they're like anodized, uh, red anodized screws. I wonder why they use that color. Sometimes that stuff has a meaning, like uh, a meaning. You know, the factory, um, you know, on old Williams games, uh, the, they're slightly not as long screws for, um, for thinner brackets, and uh, yeah, so let's just leave that there. That's that's connected with a wire. I'm just gonna leave it there, but it's uh, suffice it to say, it's enough of, of the way out of the way uh, to get a uh, to get uh, some cleaning done there. But yeah, so the sometimes the, these color uh, these screws are a funny color, not because they care about the color of the screw, but because it helps them in the factory when they're assembling. Like they just standardize on a certain color means a certain thing in terms of like the length of the screw. So if you've got two very subtly different screws and, and the factory has standardized like one color is one length and a different color is the different length, then the, the factory workers are not there like, you know, with a little ruler trying to measure the length of a screw. They just know like in this factory, this color is this length. So my suspicion is that's why those are red, but that's just a wild guess, I'm, I'm not sure. Alrighty, let's go to the chat and see what's going on. I'm taking Mylar off of Viking tomorrow. Any tips? Yeah, so Mylar is, uh, is uh, it can be dangerous, right? You can take the ink, uh, in other words, the art of the game off with the Mylar if you're not careful. Um, I haven't done it up to my games. I don't personally, for, for me, I, I totally understand people doing it. Uh, go for it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. For me, it was never worth the risk. I was happy to, to just clean my Mylar and, and uh, polish it and, and just play my games with Mylar on them. So unfortunately I don't have experience doing it. Of course the, the common uh, wisdom is to use uh, a, a can of uh, compressed air turned upside down to to shoot the, uh, the, the that will basically, you can freeze the, the Mylar, freeze the glue so that when you pull the Mylar, you're only pulling the Mylar off and the glue is staying on the play field and then you can safely clean the glue off. That's, if I were to do it, um, that's that's probably what I would attempt. Um, but I've never done it before, so good luck. Uh, report back uh, if you if you see me online on on Twitch. Um, report back. To, I'm curious to hear uh, how it goes. Hope I, I'm hoping it goes well for you. Uh, yeah, Craftsman, right? The the home homeowner um, tool. Is that a Saab shirt? It sure is. This is an old Saab 93 from uh, before. No, Saab 9. What am I saying? 93. Uh, <laughs> Saab 900 from before uh, GM uh, buying Saab. It's a shirt by Blipshift, which is why there's no logo on it. Uh, Blipshift uh, makes a new car shirt every day. You'll see a lot of them on my on my streams. Uh, I just love their their products. 
and uh, they're basically not factory authorized to use any of the trademarks, etc. And so they just they just draw the shape of the car and leave it at that. And it's it's left to the uh, the people seeing the shirt to try to guess which brand it is without the without the logo on it. But good job, it is it is a Saab. Uh, I had an 88 900 turbo convertible. Nice, that's awesome. Very cool. Um, freeze or heat? Yeah. Um, I I personally think the the so you can use a heat gun or a, you know um, a hair dryer or something like that to try to loosen up the adhesive on the on the mylar to to peel it off. I don't know. Um, it seems more people, I, when I read online, more people are recommending the freeze approach over the heat approach. But, um, but my advice is just, uh, my advice, advice from someone who's never done it, right? <laughs> so take it for what it's worth. Start with a small piece as far away as possible from what you can see on the game. Uh, and take it slow and go from there. And if one method is not working or you're really struggling, try the other. So. It's always, you know, more tools at your disposal is better than, than fewer tools. Um, would a first attempt be prudent to do on an older surface in relation to, yes, exactly, that's what I'm saying, like try to try to do it on uh, as far away as possible uh, so that if it does lift any art, you know, you won't you hate yourself uh, too much. You've been watching video all on, oh yeah, freeze is preferred. Uh, and you have a heat gun. Be careful with that heat gun. A heat gun is way, way more powerful than a hair dryer in terms of the heat it can produce. Because uh, you, yeah, I don't know. I don't think you're gonna hurt anything with the heat, but you can certainly melt. Uh, I don't know if you can melt rubber, actually. I've never tried it, but you can melt wiring uh, if you hold it long enough next to something here. Just be careful, <laughs> that's my advice. Alrighty, let's keep going with disassembly. And uh, I'm kind of at the back of the game here now. Now that I have the wire forms removed, I should be able to remove the ramps themselves. Uh, let's, I'm gonna start with the, the right ramp. And again, I'm just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle to, to figure out where things are attached. So I see one, two posts at the back of the right ramp. And then almost always, this is kind of like a universal thing in pinball, uh, there's almost always two screws at the very front of the ramp um, in this little indentation in the, the ramp flap. So at the front of the ramp, there's this flexible piece of metal to, to ease the transition up the ramp. And there's almost always two little screws left and right. Those might be Phillips number one. We will see if my memory serves me correctly. Yeah, so Phillips number two is not working there, so that's a Phillips number one screw. Let's see if I can find my Phillips number one. Um, we, it's very, very, very important with Phillips screws to use the biggest one that will fit. In other words, the one that was designed for that screw. If you use a Phillips number one in Phillips number two holes, or screws rather, uh, you will ruin the screw and uh, you'll strip you'll strip it right out and you're gonna have a bad day. These uh, ramp screws are wood screws. They're screwed directly into the wood and they're kind of small, a little bit fragile. Uh, you want to be really careful. It's very easy to strip these, especially when you're putting them back in. It's not so bad on an existing play field because the, obviously you're removing and putting back in exactly where it was. When you're doing a play field swap, um, you know, you really want to be careful with the positioning of these things because if they're slightly off, the screw is going to bind, it's going to be hard to screw in, uh, and uh, you know, you'll just, these, these are such tiny little wood screws that you'll strip the head and, uh, and then you're, like I said, you're going to have a bad day. So those came out just fine, no problem at all, and uh, while I have this screwdriver out, I'm going to go ahead. These screws are unique to the front of ramps. Because they're wood screws, they're so small, you know, um, I just know what these screws are just by look. And so normally my advice would be keep all the hardware with the, the parts that you remove. In this case, I'm just going to store the two ramps together on the floor because uh, and these four screws together, I know exactly what they are. I'm not worried about getting confused about these. So 
Those four can go on the floor along with uh, with this ramp once once I take that out. So I've got two posts. Careful with your cabinet. Don't do like I just did. And I uh, have to work my way around a switch there, but I can just reach the screw. And this is a tricky one. I'm, before I do that all the way, I'm just going to put these screws down. Um, I was holding them in my hand, but uh, this, you really want to make sure that screw doesn't fall into the bottom of the cabinet. So as much as possible, try to get fingers on there so that once the screw is out, it doesn't let go and fall in the bottom of the cabinet. It's not fun trying to fish out a, a, a lost screw, let me tell you. And there's plenty of nooks and crannies for it to get caught. Tricky, tricky. Yeah, even if you can, you can do the, the last few threads with your fingers, that way you know you'll have your fingers on the screw when it finally lets go. You don't. You definitely don't want to just like blast away with a screwdriver, because it'll it'll let go and it'll go flying. So now one more easy to access, and uh, that should be it for the right ramp. Yeah, this this guy here is easy, very easily accessible. Got my fingers on it, and alrighty. So I've got a careful. Don't just go tearing the thing out because now I've got a switch. Um, connected here and maybe what I'll do is disconnect the switch so this switch here is held down by a bracket with this gate all right so decision time I could lift the play field and disconnect this switch from underneath uh, that's gonna be tricky with the camera and so what I'm gonna do is just remove the switch, it's its disconnectable from the rest of the ramp, and uh, I'm just going to leave it dangling because that's going to be the easiest way to get the ramp out without having to lift the play field. Um, you know, a little bit of a compromise because this is a live stream, but it is what it is. Um, I was saying earlier, uh, it's not the end of the world if you have a part dangling still connected by wire when all you're doing is cleaning. Very different than a play field swap or a full tear down if you're gonna clear coat your play field, etc. You really need every single part removed. And so that case, you would, it would mean raising the play field, disconnecting, uh, removing everything. In this case, that's not what I'm doing, so it's totally fine to, to leave it dangle. And now I've got the left, uh, right ramp out. I'm gonna go put this down in my staging area and with all the hardware. All right, so now I'm collecting all the screws for that. I'm gonna put those down there too. Working on pinball live on the internet from San Jose, California. Something I've, I've never tried before. I don't know if anyone has, but uh, I'm sure it's some, someone's gotta have done this. I'm not the first one, but... Uh, um, are replacement screws easy to find if you manage to screw it up? Well, yes and no. Um, places online like McMaster Car in particular just have an amazing selection of hardware. Even, even still, you, there are some pieces of hardware that are very, very pinball specific that uh, you're gonna have a hard time finding online. However, uh, the pinball supply places carry a good number of them, if not all. Uh, and so it just depends, you know, but yes, you're, you're generally able to, to buy a replacement. Like those ramp screws that I was saying were super easy to, to strip out, you can absolutely buy those. They're used on like every single game, right, with, with ramps. Uh, so yeah, the, the, it, is, it is possible to buy replacements, and, I, and I've certainly had to do that. All right, so let's go to the left ramp now. Maybe there's more questions. Power supply my PC has a fan with a grill just large enough for screws to fall into it. And because I'm, I have crummy tools, a lot of the times I end up having to shake them out after removing the power. Yeah, that's not fun. Uh, that sounds kind of similar to, you know, what it is to have, you're removing a screw 
the play field's at an angle, you drop it, and yeah, it's just who knows where it goes. It takes a flashlight, a lot of patience to uh, to find it. Uh, it, can be, it can be tough. All right, so let's finish the left ramp here. It's not connected by much, it looks like. I have probably just one post. Yes. Oh, at the back, and it's on the opposite side. Here's another challenge of doing this on a live stream. The cameras are on that side, so I can't exactly go over there. Uh, it would be much easier from that side. Um, the, the tripods and everything are in the way, so I'm gonna do it the, uh, the harder way by reaching over. Uh, almost have to do this one by feel, uh, because I, can't, I literally can't see it from here. Uh, but there it is, I got the screwdriver on it. Hopefully you can hear me okay when I'm all the way at the other end of the game. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing out. It's going to be tougher the other way, of course. Removing is always easier than reassembling. Alright, I don't want to lose that screw. Gimme, come to me, screw. I uh, got it. Between the tips of the fingers. And uh, this one here is going to have the same exact challenge the other one is, which is there is a switch uh, for uh, you know telling the game when you made the ramp. Uh, that switch is, uh, is has a wire and uh, it's going to prevent me from removing it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing I did the other one, which is remove the little bracket that holds the switch to the ramp. If you're just joining us, we're doing uh, pinball maintenance tonight, doing a shop job on Metallica, uh, tearing the whole top side apart, cleaning, replacing rubbers, and uh, we might do a small upgrade or two at the same time. Um, and uh, if you've never done this before, but and you have any questions, by all means, hop on the chat. Now there's still something holding this. I wonder. What is... What has got this attached? It feels like another wire. Oh, it was just the, uh, just this big, uh, lamp thing here. But, uh, that's it. Got it. So here is the left ramp. And we'll clean everything, of course, before we put it back in. Uh, but we don't have to do that right now. Alrighty, what's next? So, we have... Maybe I will try to move the camera a little bit. Uh, to, to get the uh, the back of the game a little bit better. Because I'm, I'm at the back of the game now. I want you to be able to see. And alrighty. There you go. So, we got the front of the game pretty much covered. And... Uh, and now we'll work on the back. What kind of insight do you get into a game designed by cleaning a table like this? Is there a newfound appreciation that comes during the process? Absolutely, it's a good question. Uh, first, of all, you'll, first of all, you'll notice a lot of details of the artwork uh, that are frankly the, the back third of the game. It's, it's difficult to see the art uh, because it's covered by ramps and stuff and it's far away from you, the player. So you will gain new appreciation into the artwork of the game. Sometimes for very, very complex games, um, you can't, this is not typical of newer Stern games, but in the Williams era, there are some games where the back of the game is just so chock full of stuff, layers upon layers of things, that it's not really obvious the path of the ball in places. It's, it's totally obscured. And oftentimes it doesn't matter to play the game, like it doesn't change how you play it, but it's still, it's like, it's kind of weird sometimes to play these, it's kind of like on Twilight Zone, you make that shot below the camera where the ball ends up in the uh, the city area with the pop bumpers. It kind of goes up and then around and it comes back down into the pop bumper. It's like, how does that work? And there's it's it's all hidden underneath the mini play field. So unless you tear the game apart and and see or look at a blank unpopulated play field, like you could never know how that works. Um, so yeah, you do gain a, a, an appreciation for it. I wouldn't say meaningful to the to the point of like changing how you play the game, but it it, it helps you understand the game. Maybe if it, if it's a brand new game that you're not familiar with, uh, you know, taking a close look at it by disassembling would, would would help you more. So next we're gonna do the plastic over the graveyard. 
just wondering if that is the best order here. So we've got another plastic on top of it, so we'll probably do that one first. And I think that one might be an aftermarket one too. Alrighty. Okay, so I've got a clear plastic here, which is also attached on this lamp. We'll go ahead and remove that too. Okay, so I've got a screw just trapped between on the, the lamp bracket now. Again, now I've got all these screws in my hands, it can be difficult. Um, as soon as this plastic is out, um, then I can remove the graveyard plastic. So the, uh, the pop bumpers on my game are very, very dirty. Uh, they're some of the dirtiest. I don't think that's going anywhere. I'm just going to leave that screw there. It's kind of trapped on that bracket, but trapped is good. It means I don't have to remove it and it's not going to get lost. Okay, so now we're going to remove some, uh, some nuts on this graveyard plastic. And that should be a 516. In other words, a Klein yellow. And there's a bunch of them on this. One of the uh, the most difficult games I've ever shopped is uh, is probably World Cup Soccer. It's not difficult. Like there's nothing. There's no one particular thing that's hard on it. Um, but World Cup Soccer just is so many layers of ramps, and uh, it's really really a tight squeeze to get. Um, it's a tight squeeze to get wires fished between between the layers of ramps underneath the playfield. Like that's one of those games where to remove a ramp, you really do have to disconnect underneath the playfield. Um, and then when you're putting it back together, you know you're you're both installing the ramp and trying to get the wire through the playfield at the very same time. And so you, it's it's super. It's kind of like you're placing the ramp, um, but before you screw it in, you know you kind of pry it up a little bit, fish the wire in. A little bit tricky. Not hard, but uh, definitely definitely more uh, more work. Alrighty, so here's the uh, the graveyard plastic with this plastic protector. <clears throat> so I'm considering this uh, this stream definitely uh, an experiment to see if it, if it's interesting. I don't know. Is it is it relaxing? Is it uh, is it uh, mind-numbingly boring? I have no idea. Uh, you tell me um, if, if you'd like to see this again, if you want to see it on different games, or if I should just go back to my regular streams and, uh, and, and actually play pinball. Certainly when this game is done, I look forward to it, and I look forward to playing it again. Uh, but yeah, this could, uh, it's a bit of an experiment tonight, so. One thing I need to look at is how the heck they design these things from concept to engineering. Seems like an interesting job. Absolutely. Uh, not gonna lie, I, I wouldn't mind doing it. Uh, I doubt it's a very good living. It's probably more a, a passion thing than, than anything else. I'm not saying they're, they're badly paid, but uh, certainly um, it's kind of, kind of like the video game industry, right? People want to, to work in video games and, and hence uh, it, it can be a bit of a grind and uh, you know, not, not as well compensated. Uh, but it would be fun to do for sure. Uh, World Cup Soccer is considered one of the harder games to shop. That was that was definitely my experience. That was the game that uh, if you were if you're watching a couple nights ago, I said I bought that game 
when I showed up to pick it up, it was outdoors. It was literally under a carport in the backyard and uh, completely filthy. I almost turned away. I was, uh, and it didn't, you know, who wants to buy a game that's been sitting outside? But it was dry, you know, it hadn't been rained on. Um, they had tarps over it uh, and it was under a carport. And there didn't seem to be any corrosion. Uh, it was just dirty. And uh, yeah, it was the, the right decision to get it because uh, I tore it apart, cleaned it like I'm doing the Metallica now. And when it was back together, that was just an amazing, amazing condition game. So um, there's some photos on my website too, if you want to see. That one, I mean, you're some people, someone was saying that uh, this game doesn't look that dirty, why are you doing this? Well, it's kind of hard to see on camera. Uh, that World Cup soccer, that would have been extremely obvious on camera. It was, it was very, very bad. Um, did you ever get any farther with your P-Rock? No, I, uh, Doctor Who Custom Project, that's been years, unfortunately. Um, what basically happened with that, I wanted to design my own game, and I still do uh, want to one day. Um, I had never done a playfield swap when I started kind of tinkering with, with P-Rock and, and making my own game. And I kind of realized I got flippers flipping and stuff on a on a, on a you know I had access to a CNC router and I made a blank playfield with flippers and you know and in lanes and slings and that's pretty much it. Um, and and then I kind of realized like maybe I'm 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 shooting uh, for the moon here a little bit too soon uh, and I and it's an overly ambitious uh, above my head project. I, I, you know, and I hadn't never done a playfield swap before, so I figured, let's start with a playfield swap. I'll probably learn a lot doing a playfield swap, how games are put together, and absolutely did. Um, uh, and so I kind of put that project aside, and then I ended up with a backlog of playfield swaps. I had all these games that playfields were coming out for, uh, Taxi, Funhouse, um, and uh, Space Shuttle are the three that I've done, and so and they take a long time. Um, I don't have that much time to, to, to work on the games. And so I, um, I, I just built myself into a hole of too many projects. Um, I think for me, getting to, to working on a game, you know, building a game in the garage, just like Keith Eldwin did. Of course, my, I'm sure mine won't be nearly as good as Keith Eldwin's game, but uh, my attempt anyway, it'll probably be a retirement project, if I'm honest. I mean, there's so many new games coming out. There's so many things I want to do, different things. Um, that I just don't, yeah, I don't have time and uh, it's too big of a project. The first project I, w I probably need to do before trying to build a game again actually is building a CNC router. Um, at the time I, I was a member at a place called Tech Shop, which they had a few locations around the country, including uh, in San Jose, and they had a shop bought CNC router, four by eight foot, router, a CNC router, you could put a full-size sheet of plywood on there, run your program, and cut pl uh, pinball playfields. It was, it was brilliant. It was awesome. Um, unfortunately, Tech Shop has gone bye-bye. They, they weren't able to find a business model that worked. They're all closed, and so I don't have access to a CNC router anymore. Uh, and so that's probably um, the first thing I need to do. And the good news is there's kits. You can buy kits on eBay or AliExpress for building CNC routers, uh, and you get all the parts from China typically, and they're pretty affordable. And I, it, I you know, the cool thing about building a, your own CNC router is I could build it exactly to the dimensions, the cutting envelope, which is the maximum size uh, work piece it can work with. I could build a cutting envelope CNC router tailor made to a pinball playfield. In other words, a machine that fits a piece of wood exactly the size of a pinball playfield, no smaller, no bigger, uh, which is exactly what you need, and uh, that's probably what I would do. It'd be pretty cool to do that. Uh, but that's that's the story uh, on that project. Uh, I have an appreciation for this kind of thing because my dad in his career is an electrician. Might be uh, more niche, and pinball is already pretty niche, you should upload this to YouTube. I will. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe uh, I'm gonna tear the game apart and it is shame not be able to put it back to together. Um, so let's see how it turns. Before I commit to putting this on YouTube, I probably want to uh, make sure that, that the game has been put back together and is working and, uh, and everything. But yeah, sure, why not? After that, uh, 
This is probably the only Metallica video I'll be able to put on on YouTube because of the uh, the music uh, in the game. I can't actually upload a Metallica music. It'll be flagged for you know uh, being Metallica songs. Uh, and so uh, yeah, I'm happy since the game's not on. There's no reason not to upload it. I guess. Alrighty, what's next? There is, I believe this is a mod. My hammer has some lights in it. And I kind of want to take that out, but I won't because I don't need to. I can get under the, the hammer just fine there to clean. Oh yeah, what I was going to do is there's a... Uh, this game has these protectors made by Cliffy. They're super, super thin um, uh, steel. And uh, actually, you know what I can do maybe is rotate this camera a little bit that way. Maybe then now you can see the, uh, the back of the game a little bit. Um, yeah, so these guys here are uh, Cliffy Protectors. They're, they've got uh, some adhesive on the, on the bottom, very thin steel. I don't like them. Uh, I'm just going to take these out. There's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're there to protect the playfield from chipping. For uh, a home game, I really don't think that that is... Uh, that is needed, it just, and it can interfere with the play of the ball, so I am taking him out. Now I've got a part that I just threw on the floor that I need to go stage correctly so I can put it back together. Alrighty. And uh, now I have access to the, the, the graveyard area here and the cross, the, the lane in the back. All right, so now there's another plastic. I'm going to work on, uh, what should I do next? Let's work on the snake next. So first of all, there's a clear plastic. There's a clear plastic on top of the snake. Sometimes you need to remove those, sometimes you don't. A lot of the times you'll have a sandwich of, of two plastics, and the whole assembly can come out. You don't need to separate them. So don't just go removing the, uh, the first plastic on top unless you know you need to. In this case, I think those two will come, those two plastics will come out as an assembly. So I'm not going to remove them both. I am going to remove the screw holding this spotlight. And then... Alrighty. Tight little squeeze here to get the screw out, which is pretty long. I'm gonna leave that there. And then I've got one screw on this side. And then I think that whole sandwich comes out. Oh, there's another lamp, of course. Okay, let's put some parts down here. Go back to the uh, other window so I can see the chat. Enjoying your camera location tonight as well as your pin inside. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, NBU4 Prod, thank you. Uh, I think I know who you are again. I won't say your name for privacy reasons. Uh, yeah, I'm shopping out Metallica. It's due for a good clean. Uh, you're very well able to clean your machines, I know, because every time I've gone to your house and played your machines, they're the cleanest I've ever seen. Uh, so I'm just trying to uh, to do do the same here with Metallica. And this is tricky. How does that come out? So there's uh, the hammer has a handle in the back, and this plastic goes all the way around the handle. There's no way that can come out. I guess you have to remove the entire handle. Um, again, I'm going to take a little shortcut here. I don't need to. I have access to everything I need to clean without... Um, save yourself some work. If you can just leave a part dangling and all you're doing is cleaning, uh, there's no sense creating more work for yourself than you need to. You can just leave it there. Uh, you, you can, uh, the parts dangling, you can move it out of the way to get your rag in there when it's time to clean. Totally fine. 
by my book. And so yeah, um, this plastic is not going to come out any way I see without removing the entire hammer handle. And so I'm just going to leave that as is and not touch it further. There's no rubbers. Sometimes you, your, your hand is forced. You've got uh, rubbers beneath a plastic and there's no way you can replace the rubber without removing that plastic. If that were the case, I would have no choice. Uh, but I don't think that's the case here, so why do it? I will probably just leave that as is. Yeah, there's some, you know, small post rubbers, but I have access to them all. I don't, don't need specifically to remove them, so I'm just going to leave them at that. Alrighty, next I've got, so actually before I do that, the problem now is I've got some hardware. Uh, it's the, the hardware I just removed is for this plastic, which is now dangling. Uh, normally I would remove the plastic, put it down on the floor with its hardware to keep it all together. Since I can't remove this now, probably what I will do is reassemble this as best I can. Oh, well, that's not going to stay there, is it? Hmm. I'm just going to have to improvise, I believe. So this screw will go in the back here where it came originally. I can put that in there. I'm trying to figure out how to not separate the hardware from its piece in a world where the plastic's not coming out. And so what I'm going to do is use some blue tape. Uh, I know if I put this part down on the floor just by itself, when it comes time to reassembly, I will have no idea where this, this post goes. And so what I can do in the meantime is simply just use some painter's tape and tape it to the part. That way it'll stay together and I will know where it goes when I put it back together. Okay. Whatever trick works. Uh, there's no rules to do in this. Whatever trick works. Alrighty. So next. I'm going to work my way back towards Sparky. I see a lot of uh, rubbers back there. The next one is around this pop bumper, and I see a bunch of um, nuts. So let's go 516 and start removing. Alrighty. Alrighty. This is four nuts on this one. Oh, those were two separate plastics. Alright, so two more little plastics around the pop bumper. Uh, just held down with 5 16 nuts. Plastics around Sparky next. All right, so I've lost a uh, I've lost a nut. I can see it. So before before that nut goes anywhere. for needle nose plier and try to extract it. All right, I got lucky, I got it. <laughs> Uh 
No idea how Pop Bumper functions. What's the mechanism uh, behind what it does? Well, I will show you. It's a great question. Um, how can I get the camera better positioned? I'm going to move things around. Bear with me as I adjust the, the camera rig here. Sorry for the noise. Because I need to get the camera closer to the back of the game. Move this whole thing. Oh. Alrighty. How did that work out? Nothing is adjusted now. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I can fix this. And I can zoom in. We're doing it live, people. We're doing it live. <laughs> Okay, so that might be as close as I can get it, uh, for now at least. Um, basically, underneath here, you've got these little white discs. And I don't know if you you can see, but it's, it's basically a round, flat, white disc. And uh, basically, the ball can roll over this disc from any side and cause it to, to tilt. Um, that disc is not just a disc. On the on the bottom side is a stem. The stem is pointed straight down towards the underside of the playfield, okay, perpendicular. Um, and so you've got this stem. And so what happens if the disc is tilted in any direction, 360 or 360 degrees? Yes, that's right. If the, the that disc is tilted in any direction from the ball rolling over it, the stem will move alongside the disc because it's all one piece, right? Okay, so now we have a stem going underneath the playfield, and that stem, if the ball uh, rolls over the, the disc, the stem will move, and so it's being deflected uh, like an arm. Under the stem, under the very tip of the stem, is a spoon. Uh, it's, it's a spoon-shaped piece of plastic, and it's connected to a switch. And so at, at the at rest position, the tip of the stem is directly in the very, very middle of that spoon, okay? Uh, and that's the at rest position where the, the switch is, is open. As soon as that stem, which is connected to the disc on top, as soon as that stem moves in any direction, uh, the spoon is pushed down because the, uh, the, the shape of it, right, the, the edges of the spoon are higher up. So if the stem uh, flies to the side, it, uh, it will ride up the side of that spoon and uh, the, the spoon is pushed down. The bottom side of the spoon is connected to a switch and uh, that, that the act of the spoon being forced down closes the switch, which tells the game the pop bumper has been fired. Um, then the game fires completely separate from, so that's just describing the switch of how the game knows that a ball is, you know, by the pop upper, like uh, right around the pop upper. That's just describing that switch. A whole other part to the pop bumper is the bumper action of, like, you know, it flinging the ball away. That's a totally separate piece. That is a solenoid that, um, once the switch has told the game uh, the ball is there, the CPU then sends a signal, okay, fire that solenoid. Um, and that solenoid basically is an up-down solenoid that's connected to a bracket that holds uh, a ring, which is this metal thing here. So this thing goes, uh, is, is a, a ring that goes all around the entire pop bumper, and there's two rods going straight into the play field. Um, when the solenoid fires, it's like I said, it's underneath the machine, there is an up-down solenoid. The solenoid simply pulls down on both stems, and uh, it's metal. And so regardless of where the ball is around the pop bumper, um, the, the, the moment, you know, so the switch tells the game, ball's there, game then fires the, the, the solenoid, pulls down on the ring, and the, the, the ring hits the ball, 
Uh, and the ring is at an angle such that it doesn't just like smash down on the ball, otherwise the ball would go nowhere. The, the edges of the ring are kind of rounded to force the ball away. Um, and that's how a pop bumper works. Now, it's not, there's the switch, which we first talked about, then we talked about the solenoid, which gives it its firing action. The third element to a pop bumper is the lighting. Uh, almost all pumpers have, pop bumpers have lights in them. Uh, and again, that's just totally independent of the, the switch and the solenoid. There is a light in it, which the game can also control. Uh, the pop bumper is one of the only mechanisms that and the slingshots are the two that come to mind, standard pinball mechanisms that combine elements from all three main wiring circuits to the game. Switches, solenoids, and lamps. Uh, there's a whole mess of wiring underneath the game, but for the most part, everything falls in those three categories. Switches, solenoids, and lamps. Both pop bumpers and slingshots uh, combine all three elements into one mechanism and for that reason they are time-consuming to work on. They're not hard, they're you know every pop bumper pretty much works the same uh, but they're they're very time-consuming to work on. There's there's a lot of stuff to them. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Pascal, good question, thanks for asking. Alrighty, that's pretty ingenious. Yes and it's <laughs> Pop bumpers have been around since like ooh, the 50s, maybe, maybe even older. In the early days, there was no CPU, so it wasn't a matter of the switch telling the CPU the pop bumper has been, you know, been activated, and then the CPU firing a solenoid. There was no, there were no CPUs in the time at the time, so a lot of the times, the the act of closing that switch would is what would give power to the solenoid. Uh, and so it's just directly wiring one to the other, switch, uh, you know, closes the circuit, energizes the coil, boom, it fires. Um, and then there would be a separate switch to, you know, to actually give, give the user points. Uh, in other words, there's two switches. One to close the power to uh, the switch, the, the circuit for power to actually fire the solenoid, and the other to give the user points. In modern games, there's almost always only one switch which can do both things because you have a CPU. The switch can, tells the CPU, the CPU can both award points and fire the solenoid as needed. Thanks, I'm glad you, I'm glad you appreciated that answer. It's a little long-winded, but um, it's a good question. I, I love talking about this stuff, so. All right, where were we? We're still removing plastics. I've got uh, this plastic here removed from in front of Sparky. And so next, we're going to see what else is holding this plastic down. I believe it's just this guy. Yep, all right. So we've got the next one out now. And this was actually held down by a post. There's actually a little threaded in here. And this the post can actually be both something that supports whatever was on top of it and the post itself is a, is a fastener in this case, which is kind of nice. Hopefully I don't run out of, uh, of floor space there. Uh, as I'm tearing everything down, I, uh, I'm laying everything down on the floor in, in, you know, in order, so that when it's time to build back up, I can just follow the reverse steps, and uh, hopefully it all goes back together again. Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, had a great fall, couldn't put it back together again, something like that, right? I'm sure hoping that doesn't happen to me. Alright, so I'm trying to see what else I need to remove to get access to clean and replace all rubbers. Uh, and at the same time, I want to make sure my camera is relatively okay. I'm at the back of the game now. And uh, yeah, I guess that'll work. Maybe I'll zoom in right here. There you go. Does that work? Also, hope I'm on. Uh, I'm on camera. It's a little odd to do this as a live stream. Never. Uh, I've worked on tons of games before, of course. Uh, I've never done a live stream of one. It, it adds to the challenge because uh, half my brain is uh, is talking. Alrighty. So this is the switch for the ramp that I removed previously, and now it's... It's 
all caught up in there. All right, so there you go. The other cool thing about uh, disassembly with wiring is wiring has memory to it. All this this uh, this stranded wire, it's really amazing. Like uh, you disassemble a game, you've got all these loose wires. Those wires retain memory. They return the shape of where they were. And they actually help you in reassembly because the, the wires will just naturally want to go uh, in the same position that they were originally. Um, so that's, that's what I'm talking about here. You can see the, the wire has a very particular bend to it. So that'll come in handy. All right, so I've got um, access all the way to the back. There's some lane dividers here that are gonna have to come out. And uh, otherwise, doing pretty good. I've definitely got a cracked plastic here. I believe that's just a plastic protector. It's not factory of the game. And, uh, and one more plastic to the, to the left of Sparky. And then that might be it for plastics, which is good. Yes, there you go. So this one was actually held on by two little posts. I'm gonna just put those on the floor in the exact same position. <clears throat> Alrighty. Come on in. I believe I should be uh, in good shape to clean everything now. Oh, there's a piece of cardboard here. That is really interesting. I don't know why that is. Probably to prevent a short, if I were to guess, but uh, really interesting. A little flapped cardboard just sitting there. There's an opto here. An opto is a, an optical switch. Um, and so you've got a transmitter and a receiver, and uh, the transmitter transmit lights. Uh, the receiver detects that light, and when the ball blocks the path, between the two, the, the receiver stops receiving the light and then the game knows that the, the ball is there. That's what these two things are. Um, and behind one of them is this little flap of cardboard, which is really interesting. If you know what that is, you're on the chat, hop on the chat and, uh, and <laughs> enlighten us because I have no idea why there is a flap of cardboard attached to, to uh, one of the optos there. I'm not gonna touch it, it doesn't hurt anything. I'm gonna assume that it was there. Uh, you never know, right? You buy a game secondhand. Did it come like like that from the factory? Was that put in after the fact? Eh, who knows? <laughs> You'll never know. Um, what are the components you have to look for most when it comes to wear and tear? Rubber and flippers, I presume. Um, like, what components is most likely to need regular attention? Um, flippers are a good one. Uh, so the the honest answer is. For a home game, almost nothing. Um, they they will last a lifetime under home conditions. Uh, in an arcade, of course, they get way more play. You're gonna want to do cleaning is the number one thing that ga games need uh, that doesn't happen. A lot of times, you'll find uh, dirty games on location, which is a real shame. Um, flipper rebuilds. Uh, and the flipper mechanisms get a lot of um, action. They wear out. You need to, to uh, rebuild the flippers. And a, a flipper rebuild kit is, is easy to do and is, is not that expensive. You're talking like 40, 50 bucks and it uh, you know, makes your flippers like new. Um, so there's that. And then just, that's pretty much it. I mean, um, rubbers dry out and, and, and break. That's, that is the most common thing, is you, there'll be a post that's supposed to have a, a rubber around it, and, and it doesn't, and uh, then the game just beats up, gets beaten up. The thing is, if you lapse on maintenance, um, the game will get worse and worse. Um, when there's supposed to be a rubber on the post and there isn't anymore because it's like it's it's worn off and snapped off, then that post is, is just bare metal. Um, the ball, is, it's metal-to-metal -metal contact which impact, imparts a lot more force into the post than if there was a rubber to absorb the energy. Uh, so then parts get bent, your balls get nicked. Nicked balls create scratches on the play field. Um, bent posts lead to the ball hitting ball guides where they're not supposed to. Like right here is a good example. There's, there's a, a post with a rubber on it there 
if this rubber is gone, then the ball can directly hit the front of this, uh, this ball guide and just start smashing it. Again, you're going to ruin the balls in the game, you're going to start bending pieces. Ball guides that are bent don't play correctly, they'll deflect the ball you know, in ways they shouldn't. You won't be able to make shots smoothly. The whole thing just starts to fall apart, right? So, and it, it all starts with something as simple as these little rubber rings. They're, t they're these tiny little rubber rings, uh, but they're they're crucial to to the game. Does that answer your, your question? Hopefully so. If you're just joining tonight, we're uh, we're doing some pinball maintenance, shopping out uh, Metallica Premium by Stern Pinball. It's uh, it's been a home use game, but. Uh, you know, the game is probably from 2012, if I had to guess, and so it, uh, it it's in dire need of, of uh, a teardown, clean, and rebuild. So that's what we're doing. Uh, if you've never torn apart a game before, uh, by all means, stick around, um, and uh, we're gonna try to, to to finish this thing. Probably not tonight. I think tonight we're gonna we're gonna end. Um, with uh, the end of disassembly and uh, and then next time around um, we'll do the fun part which is replacing rubbers with brand new rubbers I have a uh, we haven't done any yet I, I do them all at once but I have a set of Titan clear silicone rings these are not rubber they are silicone uh, and these are a fantastic product I'm not sponsored by by Titan but I do use and, and really like their their product a lot and uh, the clear ones are I think are really nice um, the, the traditional pinball rubber colors, of course, are white and black, and for a long time I was a purist uh, and used only those. Then I bought a game that had the clear ones on it, and I thought to myself, I didn't say anything to the guy selling it to me, I thought, these are tacky and terrible. I'm going to re remove those and put black or white as soon as I get it home. And then I was lazy and I didn't, and then the next thing you know, I actually liked the look of the clear ones, and, <laughs> and I've been converted. I'm going to put clear rubbers on my games now. Uh, they, they look cool. So it's funny how, how you change with, with time. Your, your opinions change. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, um, if I ever need to do close-up on the work I'm doing, let you know free of charge that you can still do handheld. Awesome. We have ourselves Someone who knows how to work a camera in the chat room tonight, and he's offering to film me doing this. So that's <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I may take you up on that once this whole uh, shelter in place is uh, is lifted. Of course. Uh, now, of course, I uh, I moved the cameras to give a better view of the back, and now I'm I'm talking off camera. Uh, I definitely need someone monitoring it to kind of follow me. That would be really awesome. Uh, enjoying the teardown of Metallica. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Alrighty, so let's get done for tonight. I'm gonna start... What is left? We have all the plastics out. That's awesome. We've got a few parts left dangling because uh, I'm not creating work my, for myself by removing things that don't need to be removed. We are going to uh, now switch over to Novus. So I'm gonna use some Novus 1. Novus One is a plastic cleaner. It, it, uh, it is great for plastic. Um, the hard coat, um, clear coat on a pinball play field is something very similar to automotive clear coat. And that stuff is tough as nails. Um, Novus One is, is pretty gentle. And, uh, and so it's great. It's a one-stop pinball cleaning product uh, that can be used on both um, you know, plastics and your play field, even though the play field is not plastic. Um, I like to spray the product on the cloth, use a clean cloth, and then cloth on the game. Do not use a dirty, grimy cloth. I'm going to repeat that. Do not use a dirty, grimy cloth. And this goes, this is, goes the same for washing your car. If you have a dirty, grimy cloth, that dirty, grimy cloth is now sandpaper. And you are scratching your play field with every wipe. Micro scratches, maybe. And if you've got a big piece of grit there uh, in, the, in the cloth, maybe not so micro. Um, yeah, so you always use a clean cloth. They sell these microfibers at Costco in a giant, huge pack of them for not that much money. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's fantastic. This, and you can see the cloth. Uh, I'm gonna actually move that camera back now. Uh, all right, and... 
Let's see if I did that correctly. There you go. It helps to have the uh, the viewfinder so I can see. Alrighty. So, and that's on the back of the game. Maybe I'll move that a hair. Uh, NVU4 Prod, I am both the camera person and the the talent <laughs> in this production. I'm doing both, so it's 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 hard. It's a bit of a tough job, but uh, I was just gonna say. Now you didn't think that the game was dirty. That's like that was one wipe. That was one wipe, and the cloth is black. So yeah, it's definitely in in dire need. Uh, and this is the best part. Like just when you you start uh, wiping it down, and you see those black marks just vanish and disappear. This is another thing that's just beautiful about that clear coat is it's so easy to clean like it just seals all the artwork is sealed underneath that uh, that clear coat and it's just it doesn't take that much elbow grease to get it clean so now that all the uh, you know we did all the hard work of removing all the plastics now we do the fun part which is just to, just to wipe it down and start to see the cloth get uh, more and more black and we'll, new, we'll use a new one if we need um, but yeah, now we uh, we just go at it and uh, get this game all nice and clean. We might even do some wax afterwards. Uh, we'll probably run out of time and not be able to do it tonight. But uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, are you still a purist on incandescent on older Bally Williams pins, or have you converted to LED? Great question. Um, a, a mix, I will say. So. Uh, one of the games I sold the most recently was uh, Star Trek Next Generation. That game I converted to LED. Um, you know, in the early days of L early days of LED conversion, I just couldn't stand them. They they flicker like crazy. Uh, they, the reason they flicker is the way that they're driven. They're not driven with DC current. They're driven with AC. Uh, in other words, alternate DC current. Um, all of the lighting in incandescent, older incandescent games get pulses of electricity, not steady electricity, in other words. Um, they do that for uh, to save on wiring. It's, a, it's kind of a way of, uh, of connecting more lights with uh, fewer wires. Um, and uh, it works great for incandescence because incandescents don't turn on and off all at once. Incandescence, when you apply electricity, there's a there's a ramp up as the filament gets you know and then this is this takes place very very quickly, but when you put electricity on a filament, uh, it ramps up in brightness over time to to full brightness as the filament gets hotter and hotter, and get when once it's at full temperature then it's you know it's emitting all the light that it's got, and then when you cut the power, the light does does, does doesn't disappear all at once the filament cools off o again over time, and uh, as as the filament cools off, the lamp kind of gradually fades away. So this all takes place, you know, very, very quickly, but it's what allows a, a light to appear as though it's on when in fact it's getting pulses, very rapid pulses of electricity. So the thing about LEDs is um, they don't have a filament that heats up over time uh, the way an incandescent bulb is. And, and they, so they, they, they turn on and turn off much, much more quickly, in other words. Uh, and you can see it on, on, on older games that were designed for incandescent bulbs. You throw LEDs on there and they, they flash. And granted, they flash very, very, very quickly. But when you see the ball move on the play field, it's almost like you're playing a video game. Like you see the ball jump as it's being illuminated with this, uh, this flashing light. It's a similar effect to, uh, to driving at night and you see the wheels on cars. It's the same with you know, lighting on the freeway. Sometimes the wheels look like they're not turning or they're turning in reverse. It's the exact same effect. Um, and so for that reason, I, I held off on, on putting LEDs in my, in my games for the longest time. However, now um, there's a solution to the problem, uh, which is extremely ingenious. It's been out for, for several years now. It's called LED OCD, and it is an amazing, amazing product. Uh, highly recommend LED OCD. Uh, now, you might be wondering if you're thinking about how, well, how does this work? You, I just said that games are wired such that they deliver pulses of current in order to save on wiring. Basically, multiple bulbs share one of the wires. How on earth could LED OCD solve that? It's not like you're going to rewire the whole game, uh, right, to, to give 
the the LEDs a steady supply of electricity to make them not flicker, how could it possibly work? You're not rewiring anything. You're just like dropping in a board and moving some connectors around back here. But the entire play field, you don't touch anything. Magically, the flickering is gone on, on the LEDs. How does that work? Well, um, it's super, super smart. Basically, the board, um, the board, the LED OCD board that you add, the best way to, to, to summarize it is, it controls the lights the same way the game does. In other words, it's, it's pulsing the lights at a very rapid rate. However, LED OCD done, does it an order of magnitude faster. So in other words, if uh, you're, I'm just, it, it's, it's not a trivial answer, so I'm just gonna make up numbers, but imagine that your, your incandescent lighting was being pulsed at uh, 10 times a second or 20 times a second. That's, that's not the actual number, but I'm just, I'm just saying, imagine if it was 10 times a second or, or, or one-tenth of a second, in other words. One pulse of one-tenth of a second every, uh, ten, uh, every second. Um, that board, it has to do it the same way because you're not rewiring anything. It just does the same thing, but 10 times faster. So for one one-hundredth of a second. Um, and that totally solves the problem because... Um, the, the, the LEDs do have a ramp up and a ramp down period like in just incandescent bulbs. It's just much faster. And so if you do the same technique of pulsing the bulbs but just do it way faster, you eliminate the visible flickering. So I just went on a super long tangent explaining how LED OCD works, but that was needed to answer the question of am I a purist or do I put LEDs on my games? And the short answer is, I've done it after LED OCD became a thing and became available because that's the only way I can stand LEDs on Williams games. Uh, I did it to Star Trek Next Generation uh, and it looks really good. It suits the theme and the, the colors of, of the playfield and the plastics. Um, and I was very happy with how that turned out. I have not done it to Funhouse. I went out of my way, Funhouse. If you think about Funhouses and like, you know, old uh, you know, carnival rides and stuff. They're full of these brilliant, beautiful signs that are lit with like tons and tons of bulbs, right? Those are all incandescent bulbs. And so for the theme of the game, I feel that um, incandescent bulbs suit Funhouse better. Um, and I, I think it looks brilliant. I really look forward to streaming it. I haven't streamed it yet, but I will in the future. Uh, the games in the garage. Um, another thing too is uh, Funhouse has visible bulbs. Like LEDs are, are, they're not bad when they're under a plastic and they're just lighting up the plastic, but they can be very harsh if you can see the bulb itself. They're very bright. Uh, they're not particularly pleasing to look at. Um, Funhouse has visible, like Metallica, you know, these games, there's they're all pretty much designed that the, bu the bulbs are hidden underneath plastics and you're not looking directly at the bulb. Um, Funhouse, on the other hand, especially up on top of the ramp, like there's bulbs that are just out in the open. They're directly in your line of sight. You're looking kind of between layers of plastics, like where the hands are on the, on the top left ramp. You can see the bulb. And so I, I just think Funhouse, it's a, it's a really, really bad game to do LEDs on. And, you know, people are all obsessed with brightness. Um, I don't think you have to go overboard on brightness, personally. Um, contrast is like, I, I you want to ask me another loaded question, what do I think of Penn Stadium? I hate Penn Stadium. It removes, it removes, I'm going to go so far as to say, Penn Stadium removes the beauty of pinball. It takes this thing that is light and shadows and, and contrast, and it removes it all. It just kills it all. It's all, everything is lit. There's no more contrast. There's no more shadows. It's all just lit. And I hate it. I don't like it. Um, and uh, I, it's fine. Listen, I, I don't have a problem with putting people putting it on their games. If that's what you like, that's fantastic. I'm glad the product is available for you. Go ahead and do it. Um, do what you, what makes you happy. 100% I'm happy that that is an option on the market. For me, for my games, I cannot stand Pin Stadium. I, I think it's a, a terrible, terrible thing for the game, and I, and I don't like it. 
so there's your there's your loaded answer. Um, also, to the, to the notion that you have to put LED, like, why do people put LEDs in games to begin with, right? Are they doing it to save electricity? Are they doing it because of heat? Sure, those are both things. You know, LEDs use less electricity, they don't generate as much heat. But the reality is, in home use, it doesn't make any difference. Your, your, your games are not going to be long enough for it to be a significant, you know, energy bill difference. And the heat's, you know, for the, the amount of time your games are on in the home, the heat's not going to hurt them either. People do it, I think, for brightness. Um, there's this notion that, you know, the LEDs are brighter. Yes, but you can go overboard, you can make them too bright, and wait till you see my funhouse. It's super bright, even with incandescent bulbs. I don't use uh, 47s, which are, you know, energy saving, lower, lower uh, heat bulbs. I use 44s. And my funhouse is plenty bright, so yeah, I, I, I there that that was a very long-winded answer. I hope it answered your question. Uh, I am a purist. I'm not anti-LED. I am pro-LED OCD, and I am anti-pin stadium. So there's all my all there all my opinions all in one. Alrighty. Um, however. Followed up with the one gram blitz wax. I've had good results with minimal residue after initial cleaning. Yes, in fact, that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, it's getting late, so not tonight, uh, but I will be definitely using uh, the blitz one gram. All right, let me turn this back the other way a little again. Oops. All right. All righty. Funhouse seems more like a historic piece, yeah. This deserves original materials or closest approximation to them. Uh, table design is something you need to factor in uh, with incandescent versus LED. I think so. I think that uh, you know Star Trek was very high tech, futuristic design, and, and the incandescent bulbs. Uh, like uh, if they would have had LEDs back in the day, they would have used them on Star Trek, right? Uh, of course, they would have used them on. <laughs> they would have used them on Funhouse too. So that's not a very good argument. Now there's like no incandescence anywhere. Uh, I guess though, for streaming, Attorney Pin Stadium makes more sense to play fields more visible. Yeah, that's true. Um, for streaming, it's good. Um, lighting can be tricky for streaming for sure. Uh, for tournaments. Uh, I, I don't play certainly any of like high level tournaments or anything, but I've heard that some tournament players really like them and some don't. So I guess I'm kind of not surprised the, the world is divided uh, in its opinion of Pin Stadium. Uh, and that's it's the same is true for tournament players. Some like them, some, some don't. So. Alrighty. There, there you go. So they have a gallery online where you can see some of their games. They, there is one exception to Pin Stadium. There is one game I have played that I found Pin Stadium to be an improvement on versus Factory. See, I'm gonna keep cleaning here uh, to those in the chat. Can you guess what is the one game I have played that I think Pin Stadium is an improvement on? I'll give you a hint, which is, it may be obvious, maybe you don't even need this hint, but the reason I think Pin Stadium is an improvement on the game is because the game has terrible, terrible lighting, and it's super dark, and you can't see a damn thing. Which game is it? You tell me, Join, hop on the chat, and I'm gonna keep, uh, keep cleaning here. You should be able to guess. If, you, if, you, if you're familiar with, uh, you know, games made in the last 10 years, you should be able to guess. And in the meantime, I'm going to put some more Novus on my cloth and start cleaning the ball trails off in the back. Hope you're having a good night. Having some fun uh, doing a shop video for the first time instead of playing. And uh, we're going to wrap up uh, not too long now. It's getting a little bit late. But uh, having some fun discussing, discussing pinball, pinball tech. Pinball repair, pinball opinions, lighting, all these different things. Any guesses? It's still no guesses. I'm going to tell you if no one takes a guess. I 
I hope I don't offend anyone with me uh, saying this game has terrible lighting, but I think it's, it's pretty much universally agreed. Yeah, Pascal, if you, uh, if you haven't gone out to play pinball recently, uh, this is a newer game that I'm talking about, uh, so you may not be familiar with it. There, and there's irony in the fact that the game is very poorly lit, too, because the game has revolutionary lighting. Doesn't, isn't that contradictory? Revolutionary lighting, yet I can't see anything? That's another pretty big hint. Just cleaning around the switches. Now we're on the back here. This is an area on the game that uh, you really don't have access to uh, at all unless you do a tear down disassembly like I did. Alrighty. Oh, Pin Stadium. I hope you weren't. Oh man, I hope you weren't. Uh, this is embarrassing. Where did, did you hear me go on my giant rant? Did someone text you and tell you to join? I'm sorry. Listen, I, I what I said is I Pin Stadium isn't for me, but I'm glad your product exists and is on the market for those people that need it and want it. But I'm happy with my game the way it is. Thank you very much. <clears throat> First hit is Avengers. Now the game I'm talking about is Wizard of Oz. And the irony is Wizard of Oz at the time had this revolutionary RGB lighting system where, you know, more than any game in the past, the game could control uh, lamps color and, you know, there's just amazing rainbow uh, of color that the game can produce. But uh, the sad but true, the, 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 the white, G, like what would be GI on another game uh, is not nearly bright enough and the game is super super dark so that is the game that I've seen with Pin Stadium there where I was like yep makes sense on that game <clears throat> alrighty I think we're gonna uh, finish with the novice and uh, um, that's, that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, next time, uh, I'm going to do the, the fun part, which is replacing all the, the old rubbers with my clear Titan pinball uh, rubbers. And then we're going to do, we're going to take all the parts on the floor and uh, put them back in the game. And hopefully uh, that's, that's where it can get real embarrassing doing this live, is, uh, is you can watch me do this as I try to figure out where a nut or a screw goes because I can't remember. Um, that, that is part of the game, uh, shopping stuff, but uh, it's kind of it's like a puzzle. You gotta figure out how to put it together and uh, you just take your time and eventually you'll figure it out. Um, worst case, there's always the internet and there's tons and tons of pictures and other people have done this before you have put their photos online. Uh, it's very, very easy to, to, to find that, that information. And the very, very last resort, out of shame, you can uh, put your head between your legs and go to Pinside and ask someone to take a picture for you of how a particular thing is because you were too lazy to do it yourself before. That is always an option as well, but uh, I've never had it come to that. Uh, it would be funny if, if it did live uh, while you're watching. And that, that's certainly a possibility. So uh, tune in next time, and uh, we're going to put this game back together. We've gone, uh, we're going to go from completely disassemble the state that it's in now, and uh, we're going to put it back together, and uh, hopefully at the end of the night, be able to actually play a game. So with that, um, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. Great stuff tonight, Andre. Enjoy. We'll tune in next time. Be safe. Best of the family. Absolutely. The same to you, everyone watching. 
you know, pinball is what we, uh, the, the, those of us in the, uh, in the hobby turn to in these difficult times to, uh, to get off our mind, our mind off of other things and uh, what an amazing thing that is. Uh, it's definitely, definitely helped me as I'm sure it has uh, th those of you online. And that's, that's why I started this stream a couple weeks ago. Uh, no more pinball nights, so we'll do it on just like everything else uh, in my, my day job. Everything is online now, so uh, why not pinball? We'll do pinball online too. Pin Stadium, thanks for joining. Uh, again, I'm sorry uh, for my opinions, but uh, I, I truthfully say uh, it, you, you make a good product for those, for those people that, that, that want that in their game. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for being a good sport. Um, and Foscata, we'll see you. Um, we'll see you next time. So, with that, I will flip the thing and uh, say good night. And let's see, if there's anyone else playing pinball? It's kind of late, so maybe not. If there is, yep, nope, none of my other pinball friends are playing pinball, so there's nowhere to send you. So that's it for tonight. Good night, everyone.